myself first. So Mike is going to be talking to us about some personal development concepts. So put your hands together for Dan Alec Mike! social media or anything. How fascinating. Has it been forgotten already? The, just out of interest, does anybody here not remember what they were doing on the, uh, when 9-11 was announced? You don't remember? <laughs> you were just a baby. <laughs> it's quite fascinating, isn't it? Um, because most people remember where they were and what, what, what they were doing. And actually, in my case, I happened to be in Hawaii with Tony Robbins when the 9-11 event happened. I didn't even realize when I was putting this together. That was actually exactly 21 years ago. So, um, yeah, 2001. And uh, so prior to that, uh, I had actually been really, really, really fortunate to have been able to afford to go around the world and uh, follow some amazing speakers. And Tony Robbins is just one of the most amazing speakers. I don't know. Has anybody actually been in the room with Tony? Yeah! Yeah! Hell yeah! Is that a week of me? No. A week of me! Thank you. <laughs> I've got a lot of problems to do with <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh, Tony can command a room like nobody else I've ever experienced. And um, I used to fly to London for one night, uh, oh. once a month, for the Yes Group because the energy was so amazing. So, um, and it seemed like everywhere I went around the world, I was the only person there from Scotland. So apologies for the accent. Uh, and they kept saying, Mike, you should start the Yes Group in Scotland. And I was like, no, 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 no. There's, there's nobody interested in personal development in Scotland. Um, well, I tried it, I uh, put it together, we had 60 attendees in our first meeting, and it took off. It was like, wow, oh, cool. And that's why I decided to put this together here in Playa, because I realized there's actually so many amazing people with their own journeys. And I find that so fascinating that all of us are here today, and yet we've all had different backgrounds, different upbringings, different environments, different beliefs. Um, maybe different religions, different schoolings, different challenges, different brothers, sisters, family, etc. Um, different successes. And somehow we've, had, we've all had an entirely different journey to get here today in Boozles. And somehow our, our, our time work has gelled together and I find that amazing. So. Um, Actually, thank you all for being here and sharing this what experience that we call life, the solution we call life. So, um, let me just see, because I did put some things together, see if I can like, pull this one a little bit. Okay, discipline. Hands up if you think that you could be more disciplined. Yeah, that's what I hear not most of the time. What if I was to tell you? that you're already 100% disciplined to your current set of habits. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's something to think about, eh? I think, actually, who's heard um, that uh, allegedly it takes three weeks to change a habit? Have you heard that before? Yeah, anybody who's studied NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, will have heard that it takes three weeks, 21 days, to change so either create a new habit or tweak an existing habit. In actual fact, you could do more than one at a time, couldn't you? You could get up earlier and read a book, for example. Um, so you could do more than one habit at a time. 
But I did a calculation, I worked this out. If we just enhanced or created one new habit, empowering habit, every three weeks, at the end of three years, guess how many new or enhanced habits we would have? Anybody? Morning. After three years, how many habits would you have? 140. The answer actually is 52. And I worked it all out, I did a long hand and calculated it. And I thought, if we enhanced our habits, 52 habits over three years, would your life change? Something to think about, yeah? Something to think about, because, you know, they say um, an apple a day to keep the doctor away. Well, what if it was that easy? <laughs> what if it was that easy to, to obtain uh, or create an enhanced habit? from where we are today. Well, what else did I write here? So just make a quick note to myself. Oh yeah, I've got that one. Okay. Accept your limitations. I love, I love this. This is one of my favorite topics. Because who here has heard of the QWERTY keyboard? Just show of hands if you've heard of QWERTY. So everybody has not put their hand up has never heard of QWERTY? Okay, so for those who have not put your hand up, QWERTY is the first six letters on your keyboard. Q-W-E-R-T-Y, from left to right. Does anybody know why? Why? Why QWERTY? Any suggestions? Show me your hands, anyone? No one's even got a suggestion. Go for it. Mark. The combination of the combination of letters and the way we use them, I guess, in English languages. Would you say repeti repetition? Yeah, or the permutation. Oh, uh, the permutations. Okay. So close-ish. Actually, the answer, interestingly enough, is it was designed to be deliberately slow. Exactly. So, hands up those who have played with a traditional typewriter and you've deliberately meshed the keys. The arm comes up, it hits the ribbon, and you've done more than two at a time. So you can get the arms to come out and gel and, and mesh, yeah? Donovan, Guy, is that in? Nobody else? No one else has done that? Yeah, yeah, you can work the stick one, right? So that was your traditional typewriter. And what they did with QWERTY is they deliberately wanted enough time for even the slowest typist to be able to press the button for it to come up, hit the ribbon, and get back down again before they press the next button, the next key. So even the, even the fastest, this is slowest, sorry. Even the fastest operator would not mesh these keys together. So QWERTY keyboard was designed to be, deliberately designed to be the slowest layer. And yet today, We've got it on our smartphones, it doesn't even have a keyboard. It's got a flat screen. You've got to look at it to work out where to press, because there's no actual key. There's no button on your flat screen. And I just find that so fascinating that today, and I'm talking, I'm generalizing, around the world, we have just accepted, well, that's just the way it is. And what fascinates me about that is, what else are we accepting as that's just the way it is. So another one that came to my mind was combustion engines, for example. Combustion engines was actually designed just over 100 years ago. And back then, when they first introduced combustion engines, they were getting around about the same fuel consumption as we're still getting today. And yet, everything else about the vehicle has changed. Fascinating, isn't it? Imagine the difference in safety, etc., and comfort in, a, in an old, you know, 1900s vehicle compared to today. And yet we still get the same fuel consumption. Why? That's because you're like, why? Why are we not getting 900 miles to the gallon? Uh, I think we know the answer. <laughs> why are we not running our vehicles from salt water? If 70 or 80 percent of the planet is covered in seawater, I think we know the answer. Fascinating, isn't it? See, I find these things really intriguing to start asking these questions. And what else is there 
that we take for granted. And actually, we all have our own little rules as well in our heads that we expect. So, um, for example, uh, when I first went to India, I had a mind fuck within, within 10 minutes. Everybody was, <laughs> everybody was breaking my rules. And then I realized that my rules are interesting. And yet, and yet, you know, in India, has anybody been to India? They're all tooting their horns, beep, 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 and no one's getting upset, no one's getting angry. There's no road race, they're basically just saying, I'm here. Um, when I went to, I went to Melbourne, I, I met a girl that uh, was a Facebook friend, and I knew there was some event happening that night, so I, I arranged to meet with her, um, sit in a corner or whatever, and it was slightly raining, just a light drizzle, and it was dark. And so I went, I, I'd only been in Melbourne three days, but she actually lived in Melbourne, and I knew my way around better than she did, which I found quite fascinating as well. But, um, when, so I was guiding her where this event was, and, and Melbourne is very similar to Playa in that it's, it's a, a little grid layout. And so every time we came to the junction, and I looked left and right, there's no traffic coming, just a light drizzle, I walk across the street. And she stopped and she waited. And after three times, I'm, I'm hiding under the canopies, waiting on her crossing the road, because it's raining. And eventually, one of us said, I did try to piss me off. I don't know who it was that said it, but one of us said that. And we both realized we were both upsetting each other. Because I couldn't figure out why she wasn't crossing the road until the green man told her she was allowed to cross the road. And she couldn't figure out why I was just ignoring the red man and walking across the road. And we both realised that it's actually their rules. She's from Australia, she's been brought up with that rule. She's not allowed to cross the road. Well, I've been brought up in the UK, and in the UK, we are actually taught as children. There was even adverts, etc., on the TV. That what you do when you come to a junction, you look left, you look right, traffic comes from the left. <laughs> you look left, you look right, you listen, and if it's safe to do so, and that's the key word, isn't it? The key phrase. You choose to cross the road and you keep looking at the left and the whole way. And we've taught that as children. And what I realised when I was in Melbourne was that is so empowering. And I haven't appreciated it. That we get to make a decision as to when it's safe to cross the road. And in Australia, and I know the States, Canada and so on are very similar, that they're not even allowed to cross the road until a robot tells them they're allowed to cross. And again, I find that so fascinating that what else is going on around us that we didn't even realise we're allowing our own expectations and our, uh, to be limited by someone else's rules. Guidelines, shall we say. <laughs> Are there really rules? <laughs> the guidelines. Okay, so uh, let me just see what you mentioned earlier. Oh, 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 what a good one for you. Okay. I also mentioned uh, Wilbur and Orville Wright. Who's heard of Wilbur and Orville Wright? Oh, this is the clever clock side over here. Sorry for the other one. So, for those guys who have heard of or Orville and Wilbur, why? What, what's, what are they famous for? The Wright brothers. The Wright brothers created the world's first flight. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. Manned flight. So think about this. That was again just over a hundred years ago. What they faced was centuries of proof that it was not possible. <laughs> I find that fascinating as well. What else is going on today that we have centuries of proof that's not possible? When I come to the stage in the past, I often come on my unicycle. Um, it's not, not really easy here, but I have a traditional unicycle in Scotland. And I like to come onto the stage on my unicycle and then ask and hold it above my head and ask the, the audience, why? Why did I do that? 
Any thoughts, anyone? Why would I come on the unicycle? Because I can! Yeah. Good answer, bro. Yeah, there's a lot of good answers, by the way. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, because I can. And if you think about it, well, A, how many speakers have you seen coming on stage with a unicycle? Not many, so they remember me from that point of view. But, but B, if I had never seen someone else trying this first, I would never have believed it was possible. And I find that fascinating. Because if anybody's ever tried a unicycle, you'll know that you, no one can just steal a unicycle and go immediately. Unless you put in hours of practice. I have an electric one here that actually does part of the work for you. If anyone wants to try it, you'll find exactly the same. You cannot just jump on it and go it. You will not steal that. <laughs> not without hours of practice. But the point, I guess, is if you think about it, we all finally learned how to walk. We all finally learned how to talk. If you want to master the language, you've got to put the hours of practice in. If you want to master juggling or, or unicycle, it's possible. You just need to practice, put the hours in, be committed to it. So on that basis, what else is there that is already, all the education, all the knowledge is already out there and that we're not, we're not doing? But we could be. Just, just out of interest, um, how many people here have heard of Richard Branson? Yeah, as we think, think so, right? Why have you heard of Richard Branson? Virgin, right, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Records, Virgin Airlines, etc. Um, Virgin Railways. Richard Branson is one of uh, the UK's probably most famous entrepreneurs. But here's a question for you. I've got three questions here. If Richard Branson was to lose all his money today, do you think that within the next 12 months he could become a millionaire again? Oh yes! Anyone else? A few nods. Yes, yes. Okay. Question number two. Do you think he thinks he could become a millionaire again? Oh yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> yes. Oh, by the way. Wait, 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 wait. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. So, question B is, if he's older than you, and he's starting today with zero, what gives him the right? to become a millionaire within 12 months and not you. Ah. He's thinking big, that's one good answer. Yeah. He's changed his habits, another excellent answer. Exactly. He has the mental resources to do it. Awesome, I like that one. Anyone else? People know him. Yeah, good point. His network. His network, yeah, he's well, yeah, he is well connected for sure, for sure. He probably has high self-worth. High self-worth, awesome. So, um, it's, it's interesting, because I've asked this question to numerous audiences, and I've never ever heard anyone say my answer, which is interesting. Yes, go. That's, that's kind of what she was suggesting, your, your own value, your own net worth um, is really, you're right. Um, but my answer, interestingly enough, is he has references. He has a belief that he's been there and done that before. So if my best vehicle ever since I left school was a unicycle, then I would know that worst case scenario, at least I could get back to getting a unicycle again. Does that make sense? So if I you know, had a private jet, then I have that reference that I might have lost it now. I might temporarily not be in that situation now. But I've been there and done that before. Does that make sense? Fascinating, isn't it? And the, and the next question is, can we rewrite our history, if you like, to believe that we are worthy enough of getting to that step. Yes? You're the brain man. <laughs> Phil says yes. Any, anybody else believe that? Yeah. Yeah? Hell yes. Good job. Okay, so um, 
Uh, what I'd like is about what I'd like to do, you guys are a couple, anybody is a couple, I want to split up. What I want you to do now is stand up everybody and pair off, okay? So I want you to find one person that you've not that you didn't come here with today. So please stand up now, everybody. Up, 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 up. Good job. So, someone that you did not come with here today. Okay, so what I want to do is choose who's A and who's B. Okay, who should start first? A or B? B, you can start. B can start first. Okay, good job. Okay. Leticia, I think Donovan wants you behind there. Are you leaving? Okay, Enrique, Enrique could play. Susanna? You're going to eat it. Who's not? Who's, you want to stand up? Yeah, there we go. Enrique's going to play with it. So, someone could do it. Good job. Okay. Are you, have you just arrived? We've got a partner for you over here. Go for it. Yeah, good job. Okay. So, um, everybody's got a pair, yeah? Hands, hands up if you've not got a pair. Okay, we don't have a Okay, use Donovan behind you then. Yeah, perfect. You guys, yeah. Perfect. And those items got one. Everyone's got a pair, right? Okay, so what I want you to do, B, 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 you get to start first, okay? B, what I want you to do is touch your fingertips, just your fingertips, and lift your elbows really high. Okay, good job. Good job. Lift your elbows high. Nice. Okay. What I want you to do, and I want eight.